So I'm glad that you're all here with me virtually on the recording, however you are. And we're going to start this show. So my name is Darius, Darius Kaufman. The show is called Music of the Earth. And we're going to be covering music and sounds from all over the world. Now, I'm going to start out with some real grown-up stuff, actually, because you guys are older, and I think you're going to appreciate this. So I have a feeling that some of you are probably familiar with Harry Potter. I have a feeling that some of you probably like magic. And I have a feeling that some of you probably like the parts in Harry Potter where he speaks to uh, Hedwig, the um, owl, Snowy Owl. Well, I'm going to teach you some real magic, and it's actually going to have to do with animals as well. This is something that has been done for thousands of years in ancient cultures and traditional indigenous cultures. For thousands of years, people have used sound and music to travel in their minds and in their hearts. And what they do is they listen to some music, they close their eyes, and then they see things. They might see animals or people, they might speak to them, they might travel to other places, other worlds. When they open their eyes, they share what they've learned with their people. So I'm gonna show you how to do this right now. And I'm gonna start off with the Native American drum, which is, where is it? This is a Native American frame drum. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be playing this, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to imagine that you're walking in the woods. You're following a path through the trees, and as you walk, the trees grow taller around you. Now you're in the forest. You look up ahead and there's a clearing in the forest and one great tree grows straight up towards the sky. And you look down at the foot of the tree and there's a hole in the ground with stairs leading down. And so you start to climb down the stairs deep into the earth. This is what the ancients call lower world journey. And there's a whole beautiful, amazing world deep beneath the earth. As you go deeper and deeper now, pay attention to what you hear, what you feel, and what you see. And have a beautiful dream. So I forgot to mention one thing, which is that you should be wearing headphones for this. So if you're listening to this in a recording, you can always go back and listen on headphones. But if you have earbuds or headphones, that's really important. There's going to be at least one instrument that you probably won't hear at all without headphones. So that was a traditional, what's called a shamanic journey. It's done by the native elders, the shamans, the medicine people of traditional cultures in North America, South America, and actually all over the world. 
And you might have had some experiences if you close your eyes and you might have had some visions and so on. You can always share them with people or you can just remember them and learn from them because that's what the ancient indigenous people say. So I want to show you a little bit about the native instruments now. The native drum that I was playing, this is a traditional Native American, North American drum, and it's made from animal skin, in this case, deer skin, tied in the back with the deer sinews. Now, hunting, you know, is a little weird for us in our modern culture, but in the indigenous cultures, they hunt for survival, for food, clothing, and so on. But they only hunt when they feel they've gotten permission from the animals. As a matter of fact, what they do is they do a journey, just like you did now, with the intention to, to connect with the animals, and only when they feel the animals have given permission do they hunt them. And then afterwards, they do a ceremony and they thank them. They believe that the, brother, the animals are our brothers and sisters, and that we are not better or less than anything in the world, in the earth, in the world. And so everything is united in a circle of life. Uh, and it's a very beautiful tradition that allows the native cultures to live in harmony with the earth. And in fact, they call the Earth Mother Earth because Earth gives us everything we need to survive. And everything I'm going to show you today comes from the Earth, from nature, from natural objects. So that's the native drum. Now, I'm going to show you another native flute here. We do a very beautiful one. This is made in the shape of a bird with a beak there and a little sculpture there. They uh, put all their animals onto their instruments because the animals are sacred to them. They see them in their dreams, and they see them in the world. That's what the flute sounds like. Now, you probably know that different sizes create different pitches, right? So the flutes come in all sizes. This is a little one, like a piccolo. And I have one here, which is my bass flute. This is a loon there. These are made from cedar wood, from cedar trees, by the way. Like that. All right. So I have some other sounds here I'm going to show you. And since we're doing a flute, I'm going to show you this sound, which is a bird flute from South America called an ocarina. that it's made in the shape of turtles and birds and you can also play music like that right? so I'm going to show you now a couple of instruments that mimic the sound of nature so hello we have somebody joining us welcome welcome so we're starting out with indigenous sounds from native cultures. And I'm going to show you something here that's a very strange instrument. This is from ancient Mexico. And this is called an Aztec whistle. But I won't tell you what kind of whistle yet until I play it. By the way, I'm wearing ancient jewelry from the ancient Huichol people. I actually studied with a Huichol shaman a while back. Here we go. And that, of course, is the sound of the wind. By the way, for those who just joined us, I'm reminding everyone to wear headphones or earbuds so you'll be able to hear better. So that's the Aztec wind whistle. So the sounds of nature is beautiful music. So I have here a big instrument. And this, of course, is the African rain stick. As you may know, the way it works is this is a hollow tube, actually bamboo, a tree with a hole in it. Inside are nails. If you look closely, you can see dots there. The dots go, the nails rather, go through the wood, and then the pebbles fall through the nails. So the pebbles are down on one end, and they tip it, and go down to the other. So that's the rain stick. I'm going to show you, by the way, an easy way to make one 
Um, let's see. Oh, I have to get my... I'll be right back. There we go. Oh, I forgot something. Ta-da! I have a whole house full of instruments here. This is a rain stick I made from wrapping paper, although you can also use a paper towel too. And what I did was I took um, safety pins, poked holes through the sides, poked toothpicks, crisscrossed through them, and then I put dried rice in there, taped it up. So you can actually make a bigger one if you wanted, and it's really nice. You can use beads, seeds, but the main thing is you need the toothpicks. So it's just an idea if anyone likes the rain stick. All right. So let's see. I got a bunch of things. I'm going to show you uh, another instrument now, and this is a very quiet instrument. By the way, if any of you want to try the dreaming and the journeying that we did a minute ago, you can do it with this one too if you feel like closing your eyes. And if you want, you can even imagine that you're going up and up. It's called an upper world journey. So here we go. gave you a taste of the Koshi chime as well there. So this is a singing bowl, and as you can see, I vibrate the bowl by hitting it with a stick, and if I rub it, the sound actually sustained. It's a little bit like rubbing your finger in a wine glass with water in it, or wine. All right, so I'll show you what the bowl's made of because <clears throat> it might not be what you expect. Here we go. Crystal. Quartz crystal. This is called cathedral quartz because it looks a little like a cathedral. So quartz is a rock that grows in the earth and it absorbs and reflects light. Crystal is amazing. So you just actually heard the sound of crystal. I'm going to tell you something cool about crystal though. You use crystal every day and you probably don't know it. Inside your device, whatever you're watching this on, phone, tablet, computer, is a little computer chip, a little piece of silicon dioxide crystal. And that crystal vibrates back and forth 32,000 times a second, the molecules of crystal. And that allows your devices to work. So our whole world relies on crystal. Cool, right? And by the way, everything that scientists and people have ever invented is all copied from nature. Nature is brilliant. Knows how to do some amazing things. Okay, I'll show you something else about vibration in a little bit. All right, so let's see. What I'm going to show you now, I'm going to show you, hmm. Okay, I'm going to show you one cute thing. Here's a test. So I want you to close your eyes and listen. Let's see if you can figure out what this is. I'll give you a hint. This is something you hear in the summer at night. No peeking. Here we go. <laughs> no, it's not a crab. Well, it looks like a crab. That was a cricket, right? I just had to show you this guy. I think it's so cool. It actually sounds like a cricket. This is from Indonesia, I believe. Made from bamboo. All right. So. Let's see, what am I going to show you now? I'm going to show you, hmm, I know what I'm going to show you. Here we go. Because we did drums before. Here's my wolf drum. Now, remember what we were talking about before with sound, right? So this is a big drum, it's going to have a deep sound. This is going to be so deep 
that you actually won't hear it unless you're wearing headphones because uh, the speakers in your devices, especially little ones like phone speakers, do not transmit bass frequencies. And this is a real bass frequency. So hopefully you have some headphones on. There's the moon up in the sky that the wolf loves to sing to. Here we go. Now, if I ever get to come to your library in person and play this for you live, I'm going to play over your bodies and you're going to feel your whole body shake. When I do this, my whole house shakes. It's really a big sound. I got to tell you something cool about wolves, by the way, because I love wolves and I know that probably a lot of you do as well. So you've probably done some howling like a wolf, right? Oh, right. It's kind of cool. I got to tell you a story. This is awesome. So I was in the woods with wolves a few years ago. I can do my thing again. Here we go. So what happened is that I was in a wolf preserve. Me and my friends went. And we wanted to hear the wolves howl. So we went, oh, right. We were trying to get them to howl. And the wolves just ignored us. They didn't make a sound. So I had an idea. I had a flute with me. In fact, I think it was this one. And I thought, I wonder if they'll like the wolf, the, um, the flute. So I went. And one of the wolves went, oh, and then he went, and another wolf went, oh, and soon we were surrounded by 18 howling wolves. It was awesome. It was one of the best things I've ever experienced. But here's what I learned. The wolves actually sing very musically. So each one sings a different note. And when they sing, they don't sing loud. They sing very soft, and they go like this. Oh, so it's kind of like two notes. They sing one note, and then they go low, like that. Oh, so I'm teaching you how to do that. You can try that yourself, but that's a real wolf sound. All right. So, hmm, since I was showing you a big instrument I hit with a stick, Here's another one, but totally different. Here we go. You may recognize this as the Chinese gong. Now, I'm not going to play this loud. I'm going to play this softly. Let's see what happens when I play this. So you can hear the sound sustaining for a long time, right? This is what happens with some of the instruments, like the crystal bowl, which I think you've heard, it could sustain for a long time. By the way, the crystal bowls are played just like the Tibetan singing bowls that they do in Tibet, um, with the metal bowls, right? Except the crystal is louder. So this sound sustains for a long time. And it's made from metal, it's hammered by hand, very thin very thin and so the sound sustains all right by the way I did want to mention something about vibration so vibration is actually a shaking right for that creates compression waves in the air so you can't see it on the video unfortunately but if you were here with me you'd actually be able to see the skin of the drum vibrating back and forth <clears throat> you can see it in like violin strings, guitar strings, something. So everything that makes a sound is vibrating. The vibration is a shaking, which makes, uh, it actually makes the air shake, right? So the sound vibrates and compresses the air. The air shakes and vibrates, and then the air goes in your eardrums, because you have drums in your ear, right? And your eardrums vibrate and shake, and your brain interprets, say, the sound. <clears throat> but here's the cool thing. Every single thing in the entire universe is vibrating and singing, even if you can't hear it. If you could look inside your body with a microscope, you'd see the little molecules vibrating back and forth in your body. 
but technically they're making sound even if you can't hear it. And everything in the world, including the planets in the sky, are vibrating. The music of the spheres, you may have heard that, including our planet Earth, which is a sphere spinning an Earth. And you're going to hear what that sound is very soon. The sun, uh, the, excuse me, the Earth spinning in the space. Okay, so I want to play you a very strange sound. Now, I'm going to play you the strangest sound you've ever heard. strange sound. So I'll show you how it works. There's a hole in the top. Put water inside. So it's an instrument played with water. It's actually called the ocean harp. So if I play it like this, it sounds a little bit like whales, right? And dolphins. What's happening is I'm rubbing with the bow. It vibrates the rod. This is a bowl of water here. And so when I tip it, The water changes the size of the air cavity, and that changes the pitch. If you want to experiment with this, by the way, I'll show you what you can do. I discovered this accidentally at home, which is pretty cool. So if you take a metal bowl, like a mixing bowl in your kitchen, and you just pour a little water in, and then you, you can get the same kind of sound, or you can also do it with a metal tea kettle. Pretty cool though. By the way, I'll tell you where this instrument comes from. It's the only one I have that's not traditional. This was invented for a scary movie in the 60s called The Birds. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock was the director and he commissioned a man named Richard Waters to make an instrument for the soundtrack and that's what he invented. So it was used in a lot of TV shows and movies. All right, I'm gonna take a drink of water myself. And now, I'll show you an instrument from the ocean. So this is a seashell, a conch shell. When you were little, you might have put it to your ear. You can hear the air. It sounds like the ocean a little bit. So the conch shell is called a conch shell because there's a little animal called a conch that crawls inside. And if you were a conch, you'd crawl inside the hall, and this is what you'd find. It's a big tunnel, actually, inside a spiral tunnel. All right? So there's a lot of space and a lot of air in here. Now there's another hole in this side, and I can blow in it, and what's going to happen is the, the space inside is going to amplify my air. So if I go like this, it's a huge sound. It'll go for a long way. The reason it's so big is I'm actually using my lips like a trumpet, like that, and it amplifies. I can also put my hand in. You know, there are actually orchestras that play music using the conch shell. But I think this is so cool because nature is really smart. It figured out how to put a huge amount of space into a little object. If you unwound this, it would be like 20 feet long. Pretty amazing. All right. So that takes us to the next instrument, which comes from the other side of the world, Australia. Let's see what we have here. There we go. And this instrument is played by the Aborigines in Australia. It's called the didgeridoo. It's also called yidaki. It's one of their words for it. And I'm going to show you both of these. So first I'm going to show you the little one. And the little one is, this is a traditional didgeridoo played by the Aborigines, the native people in Australia. And it's made from a dead branch of a eucalyptus tree. Now, I'm actually going to take the flashlight here and just shine it in the end. And if I do that, you can see the rough wood inside. And that's where the insects chewed out the wood. And that's basically all it is, a hollow branch. They paint it 
using pigments from the dirt, different colored dirt, mix it with water. You paint on the patterns with blades of grass. Sometimes they also use burning sticks to make the pattern. So this is a traditional one. And I'm going to play this in a minute, but I'm going to start with this one. This is made from a cactus tree from the desert. And you can see the branches still sticking to the cactus there. All right. So what I'm going to do is play a sound. Now you can probably guess this sound is going to be low, right? Because it's a large object. The length of the instrument and also the width make the sound lower or higher. Here's what it sounds like. So that's the basic sound of the didgeridoo. Now, I'm going to play some of the traditional hunting sounds they use to call to the animals. And let's see if I can find my picture. Hmm. All right, I don't seem to have those, but that's all right. So I'm going to play some animal sounds, and let's just see if you can identify some of them. It may be hard. I'm going to be playing some weird sounds here. Here we go. <laughs> some of the traditional Australian animal sounds on the didgeridoo. And you probably could recognize some of them. So there's <laughs> the dingo, the wild dog. I was doing a bunch of different sounds. I want to show you how to do this. By the way, you know, I want you to know that I started off with classical music. From a young age, I was playing classical piano. And then I got a degree in classical flute. When I discovered world music, I was so happy because I realized that what I loved best about music was just all the different kinds of sounds. So different. So I want to show you how to do this. So what you do is you have to use your lips and your voice at the same time, like that. And then you can, you have to let your lips flap around real loose, like that. You don't want to do it tight like a trumpet, it has to be loose. Then you can bark like a dog. And you can also do the kookaburra, which is coo -coo 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 -coo, if you use your lips. Right? So it's fun. If you can't do it, don't worry about it, because you know, a lot of people can't buzz their lips. But if you can, then you can get a cardboard tube, wrapping paper. Long ones are best. You really need four feet to make the best didgeridoo sound. And so you can make a didgeridoo out of a cardboard tube. And if you're really serious about it, you want uh, one that's like inch, inch and a quarter diameter, thin. Um, sometimes it's easier to find that in plastic PVC plumbing pipe. That's how I started off. Um, I actually played on a, an album that was nominated for a Grammy Award, and I was playing on plastic <laughs> PVC plumbing pipe because I had just started, and that was the only one I had. Nobody knew that I was playing on plastic. But you can make great didgeridoos out of um, simple things. OK, so um, oh, so remember what I told you before. I was saying that um, everything in the universe is vibrating, and our planet Earth makes a sound. Well, a number of years back, scientists in the space station were able to record, ah, somebody's playing. Awesome. They got a long tube. Oh, that's great. Wait, OK, I want to hear. You ready? OK, Danielle is playing. Let's see if I can unmute Daniel. Here we go. Okay, go for it, Daniel. Play. Oh, I can't hear you, though. I'm, I unmuted you. Are you... Uh, are you... Is your mic on? I don't know if everybody can, can see. Oh, oh. Wow. 
That, well, that's a great cardboard too. Good for you. That's awesome. Thank you. For <laughs> Way to go. That's great. So you can definitely make them out of cardboard too. Cool. Um, all right. So uh, let's see. Oh, yes. So now I'm going to show you the sound of the Earth spinning in outer space. So the uh, scientists in the space station recorded the sound of the Earth spinning. When they played it back, this is what they heard. They said it sounded like a didgeridoo, which is pretty cool, I think. All right. So now, let's see. Um, I'm going to show you a few cool things. By the way, I have a big surprise coming up for the end. Um, got a couple of interesting things to show you before then. Ah, yes, I was just checking my list, so I didn't want to forget to show you this. Some of you may be familiar with this. In the Jewish tradition, this is a shofar, and it's made from a ram's horn, which is a curling tube spiral similar to the conch shell, right? and it's used in the High Holy Days, and you have to use a very tight armature. Well, I guess I'm not really able to do it right now. <laughs> Sometimes I can get it, but you get the idea. So there are different cultures that use similar ideas of the, using the lips to make the sound with the spiraling object. All right. So, uh, let's see. I'm going to show you the snake charmer from India. And this is a real snake charmer. This is not a real snake, but I'm going to put it around me and pretend it is anyway. I love snakes. I know not everyone does. And if you don't, I apologize. But we're going to be doing this as music. So, this is the snake charmer from India. It's a traditional one that they use when there's a basket with a snake coming out, right? Now, actually, what happens, as you may know, is that snakes can't hear the sound. They follow the motion, but they have membranes in their head that actually can feel the vibrations as well. So I'm going to tell you a story, by the way. This is very cool. A number of years ago, I met a man who had a pet boa constrictor. It was a giant boa constrictor. It was wrapped all around him. So I went up to him and I said, can I play with the snake? And the guy said, well, the snake's sleeping. I don't think he's going to hear anything. So I went up to the snake and I started playing. And that snake woke up, started dancing with me. It was really cool. So I know that it really works. By the way, if we have time at the end, I can show you a picture of my cell phone. I have a picture of a snake curled all around my snake charmer. It's really cool. So uh, I'm just going to play a few uh, sounds in this. Uh, I might wriggle back and forth. You know, you can get really snaky with this. Oh, I should say this is from a gourd like a little squash, and there are two flutes inside. There are actually two reeds. So one of them is a drone reed that stays the same, and the other one plays the melody. So two notes at once. snake charmer. So that's the sound. You can probably hear that buzzing sound. That buzzing sound creates a lot of vibration that the snake can actually feel in its head. All right. By the way, a slightly related instrument is the dumbek. I'll just show you this very briefly. This is from Egypt. It's used in belly dancing music. And it's called the dumbek because you can play it in the middle to get a deep sound or in the side to get a high sound, boom back, boom 
back, right? And usually it's played sitting. Let's see if I can play a few here. Oops. I know. I'm going to prop it up here. Here we go. So you get the idea, right? A lot of different sounds, and again, some gadoom back that's used in the belly dancing music. Okay, I'm gonna show you a couple of cool things now. So some of you may be familiar with this, I'm not, but you can use water bottles like instruments, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you get a lot of them, you can actually play a piece of music, and that's how the panpipes work. Right, from South America and also Europe. This is the European version that is just one row. In South America, they have two rows, same idea. These are cane, wood with a hole in it, and each one is tuned to a note like a piano. soft. Okay. And if I play loud, I'm going to step back from the microphone, play really, really loud, right? Huge um, number of sounds, a lot of different kinds of sounds from a very simple instrument. Oh, I wanted to mention if any of you want to uh, try playing a water bottle, take my snake off here, what you need to do is you need to purse your lips like you're going to kiss somebody or say mm. and then you have to smile at the same time like you're saying e so you're e e e e blow down that's the sound i'm going to show you something now that i actually haven't shown on any of my other shows i want to show you how i was making the sound stay on the didgeridoo so you know, when you play a sound, usually you have to take a breath. I can keep playing forever. And you know how? I'm blowing in and out at the same time. Can you do that? Try blowing in and out at the same time. I'll teach you the secret. It's called circular breathing, and it goes like this. So what you do is you puff up your cheeks, push air out, like that. If you hold your hand up, if you feel air in your hand, that's from the cheeks. The in part is through the nose. That's easy. Just breathe in. You're using your diaphragm. Breathe in through your nose. Now you put them together. You puff up your cheeks, push air out while you're sniffing in through your nose. Looks pretty funny, right? Well, if you can feel air in your hand and sniff in through your nose at the same time, you're actually breathing in and out at the same time. That's called circular breathing. You can teach that to your parents. Okay, uh, one more funny thing, and then we're going to go to the final surprise. Here we go. Now, some of you may be familiar with this. I'd actually be curious to know who is. Here we go. Here's my comb. Right? Here's a piece of tissue paper. You wrap the tissue paper around the comb, and you go, ooh. The kazoo. That's how you make a kazoo. The paper is vibrating, right? Well, watch this. In China, they have an instrument called the ditsu. It's made from bamboo. It's very simple. It's nice, but it's kind of quiet. So what they do to make it louder is they add a tiny little piece of paper, similar to the comb that I just played for you. I'm going to point to it and hold it up to the camera. It's actually thinner than tissue paper. It's the inner membrane of the bam bamboo. It's very thin and transparent. 
That's the only thing different. Listen to what happens to the sound. I'm going to step way back from the mic. just from a little tiny piece of paper. So this is the kind of technology that people used hundreds of years ago. They didn't have computers and fancy machines. They had their brains and they knew about nature. All right. So now comes the time for the final surprise. And I have to put on my hat. Why is he wearing a green hat? Well, as you can probably guess, I'm a leprechaun wearing Mexican jewelry and Native American moccasins. And I'm going to show you a leprechaun instrument. As you probably know, the leprechauns represent Ireland, right? They're magical creatures from Ireland, and they wear green, because there's a lot of green grass in Ireland. And some of my ancestors are from Ireland. So I'm going to call you, show you an instrument from Ireland. It's in this box here. I'm going to get it out. Let's see what's inside. Right. Open up. Yeah, they're heavy. Go. Let's see, I'm going to unwrap them. Uh, there we go. And you're probably recognizing them. And yes, indeed, if you said bagpipes, you said the word. So these are the bagpipes, played in Scotland and Ireland both. And I'm going to show you how they work. By the way, these are the bagpipes played in the St. Patrick's Day Parade, but they're actually played all over the world. Every country in Europe has its own kind of bagpipe. So the bagpipes, well, there's the bag. And here are the pipes. You're going to hear those in a minute. The bag is like a balloon. You have to blow it up. So here's the blowpipe. And I stick the blowpipe inside the bag like that. There we go. So now they're probably starting to look familiar. But there's one piece missing, the most important part, and the tiniest part. It's so tiny, in fact, that you get in its own little box see what's inside. Say hello. There we go. This is something called a reed. In fact, if you're familiar with oboe reeds, this is very similar. So I'm going to put this reed, well actually before I put it in the instrument, I'm going to play it. Right? Cute little piece of wood that makes a cute little squeaky sound. Mm, let's see what happens now. I'm going to put it in here in the chanter. Whoa! Crazy loud. How does that work? Again, ancient technology. How did they figure this out? They figured out a way to make a sound go five miles. They say it goes that far in, in Ireland. So I'm going to put the last piece inside the pipes. And now we're ready to go. All right. Get the box aside. So I'm going to show you something that most adults have never seen. How the bagpipes work. So what I do is I blow in here, in the blowpipe, <laughs> fill up the bag. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you first on my little pipes, because it's easier to see on these. So I have little trowel pipe. So All right, I blow up the bag, and when I squeeze the bag, the air from the bag goes into the pipes and makes the sound. So I do the same thing with these. I squeeze the bag with my arm, and when it runs out of air, I blow more air in. I squeeze. And I blow, and I squeeze, and I blow, and the sound keeps on going. What you're hearing there are the drones, and those are the sounds that play underneath the melody. If I blow louder, then you'll hear the chanter, the loud melody. So I'm going to play, here we go. The Highland Pipes, the bagpipes from Scotland and Ireland. <laughs>
just played a famous song called Scotland the Brave. I'm going to end with a jig. And by the way, if any of you are interested in how to dance a jig, I'll show you. And actually, if you're interested in what it means, I'll tell you. Some of you may have heard the word um, jigs and reels. Well, they refer to the rhythms. So a jig is in 6-8 time. It's 1-2-3, 2-2-3, 1-2-3, 2-2-3, two, 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 three, two, two, three, groups of three, like that. If you ever want to dance a jig, all you have to do is skip in place, lifting up your feet, cross your feet over, and lift up your hands, and fun. Here we go. A jig on the bagpipe. <laughs> have a few minutes left. Oh, I have to show you something funny. <laughs> this is an IQ test. Nobody ever gets this, actually. Look. Actually, if I go like this, it's Sammy the snail. <clears throat> this is not a snail. No, this is an instrument. <clears throat> Can you guess what it's going to sound like? I'll give you a second. Okay, ready? <laughs> that sound like this? Yes, it did. This is a didgeridoo, all wound up, right? If you wind up an instrument, it'll, say this, it'll sound the same. It'll just take up less space, just like the conch shell, just like a French horn, right? It's pretty cool. OK. Uh, all right, so since we have a couple of minutes, I thought we could take some questions. So uh, let's go. I'm actually going to stop the recording at this point <clears throat> just because I want to make sure that we don't run out of recording time. So for those of you listening to the recording, thank you for joining us. And I hope to see some of you again in person. So I'm going to stop the recording now.